trying to read. Okay. You going, Lee? You going? It's going? How about now? What about everybody? Hey everybody. Now? Hello? 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 Yeah, we're here. Hello. We're here. We're going to start Landmark Live in one minute. We're giving everyone an opportunity See, to get their notification yeah. and head to the page. We have Black County <coughs> Prosecutor Eric Zong sitting here. He has his back to us. He does not know the microphone is live. We'll see if we can get him to say something really embarrassing. You go first. Um, Eric, um, are NFL games fixed? They're fixed, aren't they? <laughs> Certainly not! <laughs> no, never! Okay. All right. Maybe not. Oh, I got a notification. I need to share this. Share this. Everybody hang with us. We're getting our notifications ready. We're getting the show ready. Write a message. Ready. With the prosecutor. By the way, everybody, Eric Zond has a big announcement he's going to make on the show tonight. So for those of you who are already tuned in, you know there's a big announcement coming. And hang with us. We'll get to that shortly. Tell all your friends. He's not going to pay a lot for this muffler. No, I'll tell you what. Are we good? I'm good. I'm set. Let's do it. All right. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Here we are. Landmark Live. I'm Ivan Foley. This is Chris Kamler. We are back for another week. You ready? They keep calling us back. They do. They haven't canceled this show yet. They've tried, but they have not been successful. Letters just don't aren't reached. Well, no, we get letters. We get cards and letters from people we don't even know, Chris. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's kind of like a the Glenn Campbell song. Use, <laughs> it's like a who, what's his what's his name? Gene Watson Gene, song. Yeah, it's kind of like a Gene Watson song. Gene Watson is one of the prizes tonight, you guys. If you're a big Gene Watson fan, the stay tuned. The Gene Watson. Yes. What was his uh, fam famous song? The, I mean, you the were, song with the stuff. You were listening yeah, to it earlier. Was, it was you, you were rocking to it earlier. Yeah, you know. Great stuff tonight. We've got a big announcement coming up from our special guest, Black County Prosecutor Eric Zond, is joining us here in Studio A. Eric, welcome to the show, my friend. So glad to be here. Sir, thanks for coming. Very glad Appreciate to be here. It. Wow. So here's my question. Who are the they who could cancel you? Well, <laughs> we can... <laughs> I don't know. If it could be done, it could be done. It, it, it would happen to us. I, I tell you what, you. Facebook has found a way to, to uh, you know, there's been a couple times they've, they've nixnayed us on a couple of things. They like, have. Yeah, like I tried, some music to, in there and... I tried to promote that episode with uh, Matt Snook last yeah. week. I kept trying to put that out on a boosted post. They, Facebook wouldn't let me. I don't know if they didn't like one of his songs or what the deal was, but that that was strange. Facebook They're changing the algorithm. That's yeah. That's the problem. It, it was really weird. But we're going to talk law enforcement and prosecution and all kinds of things with our special guest, Eric Zond, who's been prosecutor for what now, Eric? 15 years. Hard to believe. 15 years. Eric You're Zond. only 18 years old. How, well, how does something go. like that happen? You know, a lot of people think I look like I was 18 when I started this job. <laughs> not so much now. You, you don't look like your old picture when you started? I, mean, I do good. not look like my old picture. There are vintage uh, bad check uh, flyers out there still. Apparently, uh, at High V, there is still... A circa 2003 bad check flyer. I, you look I, good, man. I look a little I, different. I would not there. complain about it. Just let them keep that up because I think the price shopper in Platte City has one of those too. I think I've seen it there. Now, has the uh, has the number of prosecutions for bad check writing has that gone down a that, little that, bit over the last few years? That has gone down significantly over the few years. <laughs> When's the last time you wrote a check at the store, Chris? Well, uh, let's let's say this. When's the last time I wrote a bad check at the store? <laughs> it, it has been a while, but. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's, I, I would think that that might be kind of outdated. Yeah, people just aren't writing checks nearly as much. Although I will tell you, we still get we do get referrals from Hy-Vee and, and other places, but certainly not at the levels that we got it 15 years ago. Now I think we're going to tease this. I think we've been promised a, a dumb criminal uh, story here coming up. So stay tuned for that. That should be pretty good. Yeah, dumb criminal stories are always fun, and Eric says he has one for us tonight. So. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? What is the most popular crime being committed by the criminals <laughs> in our fair county? I will tell you, we are as busy as we have ever been, which is not a good thing. I keep telling people all the time, look, I'm the one guy who'd be quite happy to have a recession in my own line of work. Right. I'm not getting it. Never got it. Didn't get it during the recession. Certainly am not getting it now. Um, we are busy. Um, but the good news is i got a great staff um, who are doing... Uh, tremendous things. Ten assistant prosecutors, 
10 other support staff, all of them working very hard. In fact, gosh, it's, it's 6 o'clock at night, and I guarantee you there are at least two or three prosecutors over there right now working, even though they're supposed to just be 9 to 5 employees, 8.30 yeah. to 5 employees. How many assistants do you have now compared to when you started? So when I started, there were seven assistants in the office. I now have really nine and a half because one of those assistant prosecutors is is a part-time uh, prosecutor. So so we have increased a little bit, although I will tell you this. If, if I were to use the figures that the Missouri State Public Defender System uses to, to say how many attorneys they need um, to handle cases, and I would suggest that, that because we've got the burden of proof, because we handle lots of cases that end up never getting filed, that I actually would need more. But if I just were to use their numbers, we would need 30 prosecutors in my office, um, according to their numbers. We don't have it. Um, our folks are working hard, but they're doing a great job. Yeah. So seriously, what is what are you seeing now? What kind of crimes are you seeing now? Obviously, you don't yeah. see the, the check crimes anymore. Yeah. What are you seeing now? Mark? Let me tell you what we're seeing that we never saw before. And I'm not going to tell you this is the crime that we're prosecuting the most, but it's the crime that during my first 12 years in office, we didn't see a single one of these. And in my last three years in office, we've seen five of them. Hmm. And that is drug deal-related shootings. Three of them ending up in, in homicides. Two of them, fortunately, people survived. But we didn't used to have that in Platte County. And we're having those now, often committed by 17, 18, 19-year-old kids in marijuana deals um, where people are getting shot, and, and some of them are being shot dead. And so the next time somebody tells you marijuana, that's, a, that's not a dangerous drug, the fact of the matter is the violence that, that, that surrounds um, the drug trade is unlike anything that's ever been before. And, and, and this is not just in Platte County. I, I just came back from a National District Attorneys Association conference, and I was, I was telling this exact uh, story, and um, one of my fellow prosecutors uh, from Kansas actually broke in and said, let me stop you. Uh, what you're going to say is you're having more crimes related to drug dealing than you've ever had before. I said that that's exactly right. And he said, "Well, we all." Well, I mean, just look at the last <coughs> ten years or so. You know, it's Craigslist, and it's just it's much easier to find people, good people and bad people. Uh, you know, because of the internet and social media and everything. And I and you call somebody up to Platte County to sell you some drugs or vice versa, and and uh, a portion of those are going to go bad. You that, think, that's right? exactly right. And 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 you make a great point, Chris, about the internet. The internet is a very powerful tool for really good things. But also powers Facebook Brian Live. As well. Boom. I mean, you yeah. know, there you go. We would not be here without the internet. <laughs> a lot of wonderful things on the internet, <laughs> such as this scintillating show. Absolutely. Right. Uh, but there are also some dark corners, and uh, and those dark corners do absolutely fuel the drug trade. Uh, they fuel human trafficking. Uh, they f fuel crimes against children. Uh, they uh, fuel all the internet fraud schemes um, that people sometimes, unfortunately, fall prey to. Mm -hmm. And so, lots of great stuff on the internet. Lots of bad things, and of course, we're doing a lot with that um, in Platte County. We've got our own cyber crimes unit um, that uh, we started back in 2004. Then uh, 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 Platte County Sheriff Dick Anderson and I, and now uh, Sheriff Mark Owen continues um, to keep that unit thriving. And so, in Platte County, we prosecute a lot of crimes that other counties aren't because we spend a lot of resources on those internet um, connected crimes. And, and is, is your jurisdiction where the victim is or where the crime was committed? Or I'm mean, specifically cyber crimes. I'm yeah. kind of interested. Uh, you know, my mom fell prey to the guy from Microsoft calling who's, you know, sitting in a call center in India or something. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, she was, she was victimized, uh, but she didn't really know who, to, who, to, who could help her. <laughs> so, so the jurisdiction of those crimes can be in either place, either where the victim is or where the criminal is. The problem with, with the crime that you talk about is, right, getting to that guy yeah. in India, it's almost impossible for us from a, from a state uh, prosecutor perspective to do it. And I will You're not going to send the U.S. Marshals over to India to get somebody. Well, that's the problem. Is I don't have the power to send the U.S. Marshals over. <laughs> the feds do. So that can become a federal crime, but I'll tell you, they have difficulty with it too, right? It's problems, really yeah. tough um, prosecuting those crimes, which is why what we try to do there is educate folks on how to protect yourself from those sorts of those sorts of scams. Um, first and foremost, if anybody calls you and starts asking for personal information, you know that's when to stop. If you've called them, and it's a number you know, right? If, if you've called, say, your, your credit card company, Citibank, 
and they ask you um, for your social security number, the last four of your social security number, you can feel fairly confident that you're talking to Citibank. Citibank's not going to call you and ask for that information. Right, right, yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a real challenge because I, I've just noticed on my phone the, the number of, of robocalls that I get are, are ridiculous, and uh, just in helping my mom, I, there are a bunch of really good services out there. She, I turned on like four different call blocker services, and she called me the next day and thought her phone was off the hook because her phone wasn't ringing anymore. Yeah. And it, it's a, it's it's a real challenge. I'm yeah, sure. you know, and it's it's important. I mean, I tell people all the time, look, particularly on your cell phone, if somebody's calling, you don't recognize that number. Uh, I would urge people don't, don't even answer because what criminals are doing now is they're looking just to get a sample of your voice, particularly you saying yes that then they can use um, um, on, uh, you know, for voice identification um, <coughs> with other services. And so you just... That's a great piece of advice. Take, take notes on that one, folks at home. Uh, don't answer those calls from numbers you don't know. Unless it's from the landmark. And Absolutely. Well, you buy a subscription. Well, if it's important, yeah. they'll leave a message. If <laughs> Ivan calls you and it's important, it's, he'll leave you a message. If I'm calling, and call it is important. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you one more question. Platt County is very unique in that it's very rural yep. in places, and you have uh, an international airport, yep. you have Kansas City, you have other municipalities. <laughs> uh, what is what is challenging about covering us? You know, like Jackson County is city, right. and and uh, you know Cass County is rural. Right. You've got both of those yeah. things, and and I would think that you you have to be very multi talented in in uh, being able to, to cover that whole county. I tell people that one of the great things about being Platte County prosecutors, we really are a microcosm of just about all of Missouri, with the exception of what you say. We don't have any true urban areas, but we've got suburban areas, we've got small towns, and we've got rural areas. And so it's great because we've, we've, we've got all that stuff. Now, as you say, it does provide some challenges. I get questions from time to time. People say, gosh, why are, there, why are there so many more robberies than there were 20 years ago here in Platte County? My answer to that is, look around. There are a whole lot more places to rob than there yeah. once were. And that's a great thing, right? We're, we're, we, are, we are developing Platte County in a way. I used to, when I was in, when I was in college, um, at William Jewell College over in Clay County, I used to drive down I-29 and then drive over on, on Berry Road. Um, which was a very different. It was, it was a two lane, two lane road. It was a very it? different <laughs> road um, than it than it is today, and so that growth and development has been terrific for this county. One of the few downsides to it is, it means that we're going to bring um, a few bad apples too, and we're going to have more crime than we would otherwise. Platt County is fascinating because, in the literally in the span of five minutes, you can see a state of the art Boeing seventy seventy seven. And a horse and buggy. Yep. It's. I mean, it's sometimes it's, at the same. Sometimes time. Sometimes it's the same time. in the right part field. <laughs> Absolutely. So very cool. Hey, listen, guys. We have a sponsor tonight, Platte Valley Dental Care. Call 816-858-2027 to schedule your family's appointment with Dr. Stacy and Dr. Trent Blaha at Platte Valley Dental Care. They'll treat you like family because they are family. They educate their patients on the importance of dental health and how it affects the rest of your body. Offering the highest possible care to children and adults, check out their online scheduling at pvdentalcare.com. And the good folks at Platte Valley Dental Care have given us some great prizes to give away. I tell you what, we will talk more about this later, but we have a great new game for you tonight. Get ready for this. It's Guess the Headline. We're going to have some fun with headlines. And Chris is going to try to guess those headlines. Eric might even help him out. This will be fun. We've never done this one before. Yep. So. If you're interested in playing, uh, let us know on the hit hit the button or whatever, and, and yeah, put your name in down below. And if you're playing live, we'll play for you. Hit There's like, some comment, cool sure. presents too. I mean, we've we got, got we've cool got stuff. prizes. Yeah, we've got concert tickets and tans and dental equipment and all kinds of good stuff. Now, Eric, you've got a big announcement to make tonight I do on the indeed. show. Should, I should do we indeed. get to that right now? Well, I'm happy to if you want. Let's do it. Are we I've... ready for his big announcement? A big personal professional announcement coming from Platte County Prosecutor Eric Zahn. I have, I have held it for, for just this event, and I'm, I'm proud to announce that uh, right here on Landmark Live that I am running for a fifth term as Platte County Prosecuting Attorney. I look forward to it. I've been, I, it has been such an honor um, to serve for the last 15 years. 
as Platte County Prosecuting Attorney, and come February 26th, I think, when, when filing opens, I'll, I will be there filing for re-election. Excellent. Congratulations. Excellent. Thank you. Nice job. Well, you can congr congratulate me after I win. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's what happens. Congratulations on winning the last four <laughs> times. <laughs> is, is, it, is it a very, I mean, Platte County is a prosecutor. I know that you hear the, the, the national news about the, you know, the Attorney General and all that is, is it a very political position, or, or are you pretty much just a servant of the? No, I tell people the, all the, the time. Job. Look, I'm I, I'm a Republican. I am proud to be a Republican. I am not a Republican prosecutor. Um, what I want to be is a fair and just uh, prosecutor. So partisan politics doesn't enter into what I do um, at all. I do run um, on a on the partisan ticket, and again, I'm proud to be a Republican, but but that's not what I do on a day to day basis in the office. You mentioned uh, marijuana crimes earlier as far as drug deals and whatnot. Yeah. What do you think about this movement to, uh, to legalize marijuana? What, what are your thoughts on well, that? Well, here's what I'll say about that. First and foremost, here's what we have to remember, is that states can do what they want with respect to marijuana, but remember this, marijuana is illegal under federal law. It is illegal to possess, to distribute, to grow, to cultivate marijuana under federal law. And so no state can make it legal for any individual to possess marijuana. What they can do is say, we're not going to make it a state crime. So you can't be prosecuted at the state level. Every state has the right to do that. But what they can't do is, is a fact that it still remains illegal under federal law to do any of those things, to possess, cultivate, distribute marijuana. And so if we're <coughs> going to have this debate about whether or not marijuana should be legal, my suggestion is this, we need to have it at the federal level and have it there first and then states can individually decide what they want to do but right now it doesn't really matter what a state does and, and there's been a lot of controversy recently over um, Attorney General Sessions um, announcement that he's going to allow uh, local US attorneys to enforce federal law. I will tell you I don't think that announcement is all that amazing, right? What we're saying is we're going to enforce the laws that exist, yeah. right? And, and so the fact what was amazing to me, frankly, was when the Obama administration basically forbid, forbade U.S. attorneys from being able to enforce federal law in states that had quote unquote legalized marijuana. They can't legalize it under federal law. So that's where that discussion needs to, needs to happen. Now here's what I'll say about marijuana itself. I think that there, there's the chance that marijuana, uh, probably not in its smoke form, but that there are some components to marijuana that, that may have some medicinal benefit. In fact, we already know that because there are two components of marijuana that have already gone through the FDA trials and that, that you, can, you can buy components of marijuana through a prescription um, that, that, and, and legally take these specific components of marijuana. I don't think THC, the part of marijuana that makes you high, is, is ever going to be something that we say is, is going to be really useful for folks. There may be other parts of it that are. My view on that is, look, let's get it tested. Let's, let's, let's have the FDA do what we do with every other drug, see if it's safe and effective, <clears throat> and if it is, let's get it to people to use, but let's not subvert that process just by legalizing a drug that we know, based on a lot of testing, is very dangerous, particularly for young kids. Um, what, what we know, the more we research about marijuana, we know that it has some really terrible effects on the on the growing adolescent brain, and and we want to avoid that if we can. Well, it sounds like it sounds like your your stand. I mean, it, it seems to me that that this question is certainly in flux, and and maybe by Attorney General Sessions pushing that federal uh, mandate. Something will happen where they'll make an arrest in a in a state that where it's been legalized, and then that's going to be the catalyst to move this to the this, this has to go to the Supreme Court. I, it does don't don't you think? Yeah, and, although and, and, and the best way for that to do that is to is to go ahead and knock knock heads. Yeah, seems. I will tell you the Supreme Court though has already decided in a case called Gonzalez that that federal law on um, on the, the the federal controlled substances act. Um, essentially preempts state laws, um, and that and that and that federal law is going to be preeminent 
and that the 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 federal government has shown a desire to regulate illegal drugs in this nation including marijuana and that those federal laws preempt any state laws to the contrary so that's really already been decided what's going to have to happen though is as I agree with you Chris we're gonna have to have that debate but where that debate really needs to be happening in my opinion is at the federal level first and then let states decide what they want to do so these folks out in Colorado who think they are smoking marijuana legally they're not technically they're not they are technically not now look it's it's highly unlikely that any federal law enforcement officer is going to arrest somebody um, with a single joint right um, it's possible and what the Attorney General has said is he's given US attorneys the green light um, if they believe that 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 the, it's an appropriate use of resources to go after in all likelihood the distributors the dispensaries those folks and we'll see whether it happens I'm, or not. I'm addicted to that show live PD the where they, they right it's like cops but yeah. they, they do it live and to a to a to an officer the officer say listen I'm not the dime bag police I'm not the joint police but what they find week after week after week are people trafficking up and down the highways and and those crimes lead to the things that we talked about earlier human trafficking and mm-hmm. and you know gun violence and and all of the things you know nobody's gonna really jump on anybody for smoking a joint in your house it's it's that whole ecosystem that got that joint to you that's all jacked up that's so. that's the problem and and, and let's <clears throat> let's take a second just to to dispel a myth that, that you are touching on and that is you will hear from some people that our prisons are full of first-time nonviolent drug offenders and I'm here to tell you that is simply untrue. That is a myth. In fact, let me ask you this. Let's see, see if you guys um, want to hazard a guess on this question. In Missouri, there are about 32,000 people um, incarcerated in the Missouri uh, prison system right now. Um, what percentage of those people do you think are first-time nonviolent offenders? Well, I would certainly hope that that's low. I would I would hope so, that it's less than one percent. So what do you think low it is? Mm, what is it? Fifteen percent. It's I would hope closer. Less to less than that. <laughs> Chris got it right. It is one percent. <clears throat> Only about one percent of the people in Missouri prisons are first time nonviolent offenders who weren't first given the, the opportunity of probation. Put it another way, ninety nine percent of the people in our prisons fall into one of three categories. They're either violent or sexual offenders. They are habitual offenders, people who were convicted of, of multiple, multiple felonies strikes, on, on, yeah. on, on different occasions, or they are people who were first given a chance at probation, usually multiple chances at probation, and then a judge finally said, look, if you're not gonna tell, do what I tell you to do, I'm not gonna have any choice but to send you to prison. Okay, so that lends me to this, this other question that I've got uh, as, as a sports official. It's a two-part question. First, can you tell me what a, a crime that carries special, I don't know what the bill actually says, but the special dispensation or special crime against a type of person, can you tell me what is different than, than just a normal crime? So there are, there, there are enhanced sentences for what we call under Missouri law special victims. And there are multiple classes in Missouri of special victims, some that, that, you, would, that you would immediately think of police officers, uh, first responders of other types. You know, we're talking about ambulance uh, folks, paramedics, fire uh, officials, um, domestic violence victims, right? Then there are some that you might not uh, put into that category immediately. Um, cable workers um, and, and some folks like that. And so, uh, but what happens if you, if you assault one of those people you see enhanced sentencing. You're, you're going to serve a longer period in prison than you otherwise would, or at least face a longer period in prison. So the second part of my question is that there's there's been a bill offered in Jeff City to add sports officials to that uh, to that bill. Now, ordinarily, I mean, if you if you look at the list of people who are special victims, uh, it's a pretty long list. It it probably started out as police officers and fire fire officials. And now there's like 60 different types of folks on there. So I, I think as the bill is written now, yeah, sports officials should probably be on there. Although I don't know if, if and luckily we don't have a lot of this stuff up north. So, uh, but if you're going to 
punch an umpire in the parking lot, I would hope that that would carry whatever yeah. justice should be done, no matter what the absolutely what the law says. You certainly ought to be be charged with assault in that. Whether or not we need all of these classes of special victims, I think is ultimately that's a decision for the legislature. I took an oath to uphold Missouri law, and I'm going to do whatever they say the law is. I'm, I'm going to enforce. I will tell you from a policy standpoint, I think the list of, of special victims ought to be really small. It's, it's probably those categories I named initially. It's, it's first responders and domestic violence victims, um, in my opinion. Um, an assault is an assault, right? And people ought to be held responsible mm -hmm. uh, for those assaults. I think in some ways we do ourselves a, a disservice because, if you, as you have said, that list just keeps growing and growing and growing um, to the point that if everybody's special, nobody's special, right? Luckily, uh, luckily people only uh, yell and throw bottles at me. Nobody's actually physically assaulted well, me in a parking lot yet. Yet. It's you, still you, early. You still got time. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could really screw up some calls. Oh, and just yeah, see what believe me, it'll happen. <laughs> Uh, let's let's touch on the, now. You, you said that the crime rates in Platte County continue to rise, correct? So, well, and let, and let me say this: I'm not sure the crime rate um, so much is rising as the number of crimes that are occurring, largely because we've we've seen a uh, an increase in population. So, so the rate is you know the rate per you know thousand people per capita. Rate. Yeah, and I'm not sure the per capita rate necessarily. Um, but the number of cases. Absolutely, saying. no question. Okay, that being the case, uh, the size of the Platte County Jail, in your opinion, do we have a large enough jail or what is your opinion on the future size of the county jail? I will tell you there's going to be a day that we're going to have to expand the county jail because the, I believe this county is going to continue to grow. Do I think that day is today? No. I don't I don't think that that we that we need to build a jail today. We're not going to need to build a jail tomorrow, but we need to be planning now um, for the fact that a decade from now, we're probably going to be out of space. And the time to start thinking about that is now, not when it's when that's on the doorstep. Gotcha. Now, you also mentioned uh, trafficking of drugs through Platte County, and we know with the interstate systems that run through here that that's going on. Yeah. What about the problem of human trafficking? Let's first of all, tell the people what human trafficking so, is. and. And if you see it as a problem in Platte So human trafficking takes a number of forms. Um, it can be huge multinational trafficking rings that are bringing um, usually women, um, usually from Asia, um, oftentimes for sex trafficking, but there's also forced labor trafficking that isn't necessarily just women. It can be, it can be um, men as well who are, who are being trafficked uh, uh, for labor purposes as well. And that happens on a big international scale. And it, and it is happening right here in the United States, and I would suggest you probably here um, in Platte County as well. Um, but then there, there is uh, human trafficking that is just um, when a, a woman is forced, um, oftentimes again, into sex work uh, by a man, um, what we used to call the, the pimp relationship. Um, that pimp is a human trafficker. Um, that pimp is profiting off of of another woman forcing her to do um, what she's doing, and so absolutely it, it, it exists here in Platte County. It's one of those crimes that happens um, so underneath um, what what people expect that folks usually aren't looking for it. They they don't want to see it, and so they don't see it. Interesting. Now now going back when you when you guys are talking about cases dealing with the uh, you know the online. Action, the guys that are viewing child porn online and whatnot. <clears throat> okay, so a guy in Platte County views child porn that was actually produced in Tennessee, let's right. say, or wherever. Yep. Is there an effort made to trace the guy that's making the, the child porn that the guy in Platte County viewed? There, is there, there absolutely is. And that's, that's one of the things that in some ways where technology can be powerful um, for the good guys too. Because every time you create a picture on the Internet, that picture has a fingerprint. And that's a fingerprint we can trace. And the one thing I will tell you about computers and the internet is you don't do anything on your phone or your computer without it laying down um, a trail that good, trained, um, forensic computer experts can trace. And so we spend a lot of time not only trying to get um, the folks who are consuming child pornography, but tracing that back to the producers. And, uh, and we often can be pretty successful 
at, at finding who those producers are and whether or not, frankly, we had one here um, in Platte County um, a couple of years ago where child porn was being produced right here um, in this county and through some really spectacular police work, we were able to locate um, the house where that was occurring. We were able to save the young girl um, who was being victimized uh, by that and uh, uh, put the predator away for a long time. And not just that man, but a lot of people um, who were also consuming that child pornography and he was trading with other child pornographers and we were able to take down a lot of folks who were abusing girls all throughout um, the United States and Canada. I learned this month that there is a crowdsourced database if you go to a hotel and you stay in a hotel, they want you to take a picture of all four walls of the hotel and that goes into a database. And as this child porn is reviewed, they can reverse image search and, and to the, you know, the, the type of wallpaper or the type of picture with the wallpaper, they could reverse image search and find out what room in what hotel in what state and what city that child porn was produced in and then they could figure out the time of day and, and, and reverse search that. It's pretty fascinating. And, and it, they, all they ask is say, well, if you're going out on business, take a picture of the hotel that you're in and load it up to this database and it'll help uh, find those people. It's yep. pretty fascinating, actually. It is fascinating. And again, it's, that's just one example, a really powerful example of, of the good guys using mm -hmm. technology in a way to keep people safe, because I will tell you, the bad guys are using it um, to prey on, on innocent children. Yeah. yeah. Hey guys, we're gonna play a new game. It's called Guess the Headline. That's coming up shortly, so hit like or share or comment so we know you are out there. We'll pick four or five people to play that game later. Great prizes to give away tonight. Also need to tell you again that our sponsor tonight is Dr. Stacy and Dr. Trim Blaha at Platte Valley Dental Care. They will treat you like family because they are family. It's a mother-son dental team educating their patients on the importance of dental health and how it affects the rest of your body. The office accepts many insurance plans and offers an in-house, in, I'm sorry, in-house discount plan to make dental procedures You're really affordable. excited about I dental care. Excited. This is great. And that's a long one to this read. Is fantastic. Their professional team will be helpful and compassionate through your dental procedures, check out their online scheduling at pvdentalcare.com, 816-858-2027. We've got three participants for the game. We need one uh, more. You know, so. I've been writing down names as I've been oh, watching, okay. so well, we, we've got we a may, boatload of names. That's, that's all these names. notes I've been making. I'm just <laughs> writing down potential contestants. Awesome. And those good people at Platte Valley Dental Care give the best prizes, so we appreciate them doing that. Is it, <clears> is it time for criminal story of Oh, the we got to get yeah, let's do dumb, this. Let's dumb, do the dumb, dumb criminal dumb story. Dumb, I dumb criminal. I got to hear this. All right, so here's here's a dumb crook story and and look, don't don't try. You're not going to be able to read this on the internet. You guys are even going to have trouble reading it here, but I'm going to I'm going to tell you about so this it's dollar a, it's bill. It's a dollar bill. This is a dollar bill that, that that we've blown up and as you'll notice it's got some writing on it. It also has some some. Is this, some a Nick, is this out of a Nicolas Cage movie? That, 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 that have been uh, scratched out. No, this is this really happened right here in this county. As you'll see, this dollar bill was recovered on um, uh, January thirteenth of two thousand three. Let me tell you what was happening shortly before that. There was there was a man um, who committed a string of armed robberies um, throughout the the I twenty nine corridor. <coughs> Uh, I-29 Berry Road quarter um, of this county. In, in the first um, robbery, he broke into um, a nail salon um, that only had um, one person working in it and one customer. Um, and when he broke in, um, he asked for money. They told him, look, everything's been locked up. We don't have any money. And the woman pulled out a single dollar bill from her purse and said, this is all the money um, that we've got. Um, he ended up, he, he groped one of the women um, on her buttocks, um, told him to get down on the floor, and then left. Next robbery. Took the dollar. Took the dollar. Took the dollar. <laughs> sure. Next, next dollar. <laughs> the next, next robbery, he actually broke into the neighboring laundry mat and fired a shot into the ceiling. Um, he then broke into uh, a, a little knick-knack store um, on the other side of, of Berry Road a few days later, actually pistol-whipped. A 70-year-old woman there um, um, hurt her uh, fairly badly, and then finally um, broke into a 13-year-old girl's birthday party, um, where he forced all of those girls on the floor, uh, forced the the mother of the birthday girl um, down the stairs, 
um, into a bathroom where she believed she was going to be raped. She fortunately was able to break away from him. Um, as a passerby was coming to her uh, aid, um, the guy fired a shot um, at him. Now, so he, he was escalating violence all the time. It really is. It's it's, it's actually like more on bingo. It's, 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 it's a serious. It's hitting all these serious bad crimes. Places. But finally, the police track him down. They track him down to an apartment, which we get a search warrant and search. In the search, we find, among other things, a single dollar bill. Now, let me hold this up and let me tell you if you if if you read this closely, what it says. Here's what it says. I robbed, and let me mark this out <laughs> but you can see it. I robbed Salon North the night of October 21st, 2002. The woman was good looking. She had, and I'm going to paraphrase here, she had nice buttocks. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll block that, <laughs> okay. that word out. Yeah. Uh -huh. She was with another woman at the time. I came in the door and told them to give me some money. It was my first robbery, and it felt great. Before I left, I told those women to get <clears throat> there on the floor and stay there. Then I left. Mm. So, gentlemen, <laughs> this, this, is a, this, this is what we call in law enforcement. This is a clue. <laughs> this, is a, this is a good clue. That's the this is self-incriminating. So, so he, so he kept that. Like, like if I'm gonna open a pizza them. shop, exactly. and I get my first dollar, you're gonna frame. So that's a that's a that's a great idea. That's if you open fantastic. if you open a pizza shop, if your chosen oh. profession is robbery, probably not nearly as good an idea. Oh, I'm okay. so proud! Okay. Look at my to my son's dollar. first dollar that he stole. I will tell you that defendant is Miguel Vaca. Miguel Vaca um, was originally sentenced to a hundred and some years um, in prison. Um, he will he will almost certainly die um, in in the Missouri State Prison, which is exactly what's <laughs> happened. This part of the story is funny. Yeah, the rest of it actually yeah, is not. Good it's to know. Terrifying. <laughs> little side note, and you probably already know this, but I personally know the victim that he grabbed on the buttocks, and she tells the story all the time. So I'm not sharing anything out out of out of tune. She still laughs about the fact that I quoted him and his, his comment about she had a nice she had yeah. nice buttocks. Yes, she's still proud that I put that on paper. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Very proud of that, and she's probably watching tonight. In fact, so very <laughs> funny story. I wanted to bring up something that I, a, a, a commenter on here mentioned. Uh, um, dad's rights, deadbeat dads. Right? Do you do you still prosecute a lot of those? And if so, what constitutes a felony? What's a misdemeanor? Absolutely, we we, we prosecute, and it's and it's not always dads. Yeah, um, right. it, it can be moms too, but but we we prosecute non-custodial parents who fail to pay child support. We've got. We've got a child support unit um, in our office, um, one attorney, two um, support staff people who, who staff that unit. Unfortunately, there are lots and lots of those cases. Um, and it depends on the amount of money that you owe and how far behind you are um, in owing that money um, based on what constitutes a felony um, or a misdemeanor. Um, our goal in those cases, obviously, is, is to get the money to those kids. Um, those kids deserve the money in each one of those cases, a judge has already determined that um, the non-custodial parent owes X dollars a month. It's not like we're just picking a number out of the air. A, a judge has, has already determined this is the amount of money that you owe to the support of, of your child. Uh, paternity has been established um, as well, um, or um, if need be, maternity in those cases. That's usually not an issue. Paternity is usually the, the issue in those cases. And so those are important cases, and we prosecute a lot of them. Yeah, and what's that dollar amount have to get to before you say, hey, that's a felony? What, what is there? Well, it's, it's, it's three months of arrearages um, and usually $7,500. 7, yeah. Now, those people in your, do you then go out and investigate those people as to where they're getting, they're probably doing day labor or cash money or something to, to earn a wage that's obviously not right. being reported? Um, I would guess that that would factor into your investigation and, and all that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the, the the most important thing is what we're trying to do is make sure that these people pay um, um, what they are required to pay. Now I will tell you, hey, once we once we get them into court, judges will take into account what are you doing? Are you trying to work? Do you have a job? What's that job pay? And a judge may adjust. What they owe. It's more important to get some money sure. than no money. The last thing we want to do in those cases, frankly, throw is, is throw somebody in jail. 
or put him in prison. We do that when we have to. We, we will resort to that when we have to. But frankly, we consider that um, a loss, right? Uh, lots of cases where I want to send people to prison. That's really what it's I want to do. It's not my tax dollars are paying yeah. somebody who's, who's not paying their kid, right. and it's, right. it's, a, it's a mess. The last thing we want to do in child support is, is throw somebody in jail or in prison. Um, and it, it does occur. But what we really want to do is get those people to, to supporting their kids. Let's talk about you for a minute. Where did you grow up? I grew up in lovely Savannah, Missouri, just three counties uh, northern here, nice small town just north of St. Joseph, um, about 10 miles, uh, sort of a, you know, I tell people all the time, I, I, I sort of had a, the, the, the beaver cleaver um, uh, childhood, had great parents, grew up in a neat small town, went to a you know small uh, high school, um, just a great place to grow up, almost as good as Platte County. What do you like to do in your spare time? You know, right now my spare time is is taken up with my kids. I've got I've got 18 and 16 year old boys. My oldest son um, is a high school baseball player, um, so I have spent uh, more weekends than, than I can count on dusty baseball fields um, all over the Midwest. Um, some great times that are going to end here um, once he graduates. Although I'm I'm happy to say that he's headed to William Jewell College. Going to play some baseball there, so uh, uh, my wife Tracy. Program. So my That's wife awesome. Tracy and I will still be able to to watch him uh, uh, play some baseball, which is going to be fun too. Um, his younger brother uh, Luke is a is a high school uh, drummer, and so we also run around with the with the Park Hill High School band from time to time at, at events that uh, that they do too. So I, I love doing that stuff. Um, my wife and I like occasionally to to get together and ha have a date night too. Um, and uh, so I got plenty to keep myself busy with with the two kids. Tracy and I say that in about two and a half years we're going to be looking at one another, going, "Well, now what do we do?" Yeah, that's real. The uh, the empty nest syndrome is real. <clears throat> a a commenter wants to know how many illegal immigrants in Missouri prisons. You know that's a really good question. I can't give you the uh, the exact stat. I will tell you that that certainly we do sentence. Um, folks who are both American citizens, legal immigrants and illegal immigrants, they all go to prison. Um, the one thing that happens to the illegal immigrants, or at least should, is when they when they get out of prison, they ought to be deported. Um, and I think that happens most of the time. Can't tell you that it happens happens with 100% uh, certainty, but it certainly should. Um, I don't know um, the number though off the top of my head. It is something I'm sure the Department of Corrections could tell you. They would have a number for that. Yeah. yeah. Do you? Do you this has just popped in my head. With the airport being in Platte County, yep. <laughs> what types of cr airport related crimes did cross your desk? So most of those crimes end up being federal crimes. Um, but, but we do get some people who are just passing through. We do get assaults from the airport. People who just, for whatever reason, We've all been to the airport. are having a really <laughs> bad day. Yep. Um, not happy to be there. So, so we prosecute um, some assaults. Uh, from the airport, but really, if you try to big a, bring a giant knife or something, that's going to go through TSA. Yeah, exactly, and, and, and those those are going to go federally. Those cases are going to go federally. Commenter wants to know how many inmates are being held in the Platte County Jail on ICE ice holds. How does the county benefit from that? So we used to hold a number, a lot of prisoners um, in ice holds. We had a contract with the federal government. Yeah, I'm going to raise the dummy flag. What does that mean? What is uh, ICE so, so ICE is Immigration and, and yes, Customs yeah. Enforcement. So folks who have been picked up because they are um, illegal have to be housed somewhere until they can have um, their deportation um, hearings. Um, and it used to be that Platte County housed a lot of those folks. We don't house nearly as many um, as we used to. The advantage to the county of, of housing those folks is that the federal government pays and they pay pretty well. Um, to house those folks, but the truth of the matter is, um, right now um, the bed space is being um, taken up by more and more, um, frankly, Platte County um, violators. I think we do have some city of Kansas City prisoners. In our we community. do. We absolutely do. Uh, the city of Kansas City um, contracts with us, and uh, we are holding folks for the city of Kansas City, and, and at, are holding some folks um, as a result of some of the issues that the Jackson County has had as well. Um, from their detention facility. Did they too. lose a guy last week? I think so. I mean, okay, well, there you go. 
You watch the NFL, right? I do. Is the NFL fixed? Uh, the NFL can't be fixed. Come on. Have you ever watched, have you ever, have you ever watched a game and that? Man, that looks a little suspicious. <laughs> didn't have she you ever? Didn't she? Ever? When, when he threw the pass, the foot, the touchdown pass that, to himself, <laughs> didn't she go, okay, this is this, this is yes, off yeah, that way of the script. Yeah, and, and that, that touchdown pass in the Minnesota game, last play of the game, you saw that. It was unbelievable. What was that New Orleans was, defender I, doing just jumping at the air? you got to feel bad at, about yeah, that. Right? <laughs> Amazing. Jeez, what that was, was he great. trying to he's, tackle? He's never going to live that down. No, it was one not. of the worst defensive plays um, of all time. That's not good. Um, so. Somebody recreated that on Tech Mobile and just had the guy just, like hit the dive button Super early, and it was it was amazing. I, sadly, was really we can cool. we can commiserate together. Um, as we know, the Chiefs have lost their last last six playoff games at home. Really, I had no idea. I am sorry to say that I was at five the last five of those six games, including uh, this last game. Oh, sure, yeah, if you want to say something like that when you're yeah, up for well, re-election, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure yeah. that's a good Please thing. Don't. I hope it's not my fault. Do, do not go the next time. You have <laughs> yeah, home, home yeah. playoff game, Eric. Um, Okay, sports betting. Will it ever be legalized? Yeah, I think it might well be. Um, what, you, you know, we're, we're seeing the expansion of of legalized gaming all throughout the United States. You know, it used to be that you had to go to Atlantic City or, or right. Las Vegas. It wasn't that long ago, right? Right. And now there are very few states where um, um, casino uh, gambling is not allowed, at least some places, it, including Missouri, right? We've got the Argus lottery Casino right here yeah. in, in Platte County. We've got a, a statewide lottery. So it's not going to surprise me if if the sports books um, move out of just Atlantic City and Las Vegas um, nationwide. Um, now, I will tell you, there are going to be some very powerful interests in Las Vegas and, and Atlantic City that are going to oppose that. Yeah. Um, but, but I think... I think it's likely that we're going to see um, uh, the growth of that. And look, we all know this too. There's a lot of sports uh, gambling that's happening outside uh, Las Vegas in Atlantic City. It's all just happening. Yeah. Okay. So what, what, what's the what's the difference? It sounds like this is maybe 15 years down the road further than the marijuana debate. I mean, it's this is another thing that has been sort of locally legalized. Now, I think the overarching difference would be that there was other than the wiretap. Uh, act. There's not a federal law banning right, right. gambling. So I mean, there's 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 obviously that difference. But right. this is another thing where local municipalities have said, "Hey, we want to gamble on stuff, and we yep. we're cool with it." And and now it's up to the federal government to legalize the transfer of currency because it'll all be online. I mean, it's, that's that's yeah. what it's all going to. A lot be. of it's already online. How do yeah. how do these guys? Well, get... It's all offshore. Yeah, and well, how does that allegedly? <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> Thank you for throwing that. Yeah, in. you bet. I mean, how is online gambling? How you know, like these fantasy sports sites and, and, and guys go on there and gamble? No, not that I would know anything about it because I, I don't play the fantasy sports. But oh, fantasy sports isn't gambling, Ivan. Oh, it's not. Uh huh. So how how, how did and these uh, sports books that are wherever they take online bets from anybody that say anybody here in Missouri can go online and place a bet. How's that work? Well, you what you're seeing is there are a number of states' attorney generals who are now cracking down on on those folks, right? Yeah. Um, it's always been of questionable legality, probably illegal, and the position that most state attorneys general are now taking is, we're not, we're not going to tolerate that. Um, all all the know. state has to do is say, run it all through us, and you get all the tax money Which from is it. the it's, direction, I think that's, that's what you're mentioning, is that's kind of the direction yeah. it's and, and that's going to be the draw, right? It was, it was the draw for the state lotteries, it was the draw for legalized casino uh, gambling, and it's going to be the draw for sports betting. Do you, uh, you guys offer get out of jail free cards? We do your, not. I'm sorry. There's, there's, you, you can get your get out of jail free card <laughs> in Monopoly. I'm actually, they do not kind of interested in that answer. <laughs> but uh, that's a they do not story for another time. Of life. I'm sorry to tell you. All right, we are ready to play the game. Chris, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm first excited. Time. This is gonna be great. This is a, this is a new game that we just invented today. Okay. I, don't know if, I don't know if my names match up with your names. All right. Uh, this so I, it's, it's, it's well vetted. Oh, yeah. Would you, know, you, this will work. you go ahead. You wrote down some names. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Uh, Jennifer Russell has Jennifer, been very yeah. active on the uh, on the comment board. <clears throat> so she's uh, she's uh, one of our contestants. We're Jennifer, playing for you. Jennifer Duffy Russell. All right, Jennifer. Oh, we're playing for you, my friend. Um, here's the game. What do we get? What, what, what's your what's her gift first? Do we uh, wanna... Yeah, let's pick a prize for uh Jennifer, let's I say, know. Let's say the, the Hoover, the Hoover okay. thing. Okay, well, let's talk about this. Let's give oh, the yeah, folks in Platte Valley now. I mean, this is amazing. Let's read about this. Um, 
This is like this thing a, is like a pull start. This like <laughs> this is an awesome. it looks like a big old gallon jug. Look at that. It says and ten pressure settings. That has more pressure settings than my shower head at home. Yeah, and you, you just take this and you floss with it for like a minute and thirty seconds. It plus hydro pulse massage mode for invigorating gum stimulation. And we've all talked about that. Sounds like gum stimulation. Yeah, I mean, very like gum stimulation so, is important. <laughs> it's been important for years. All right, so this gift is going to. Jennifer, is that her name? Jennifer? Jennifer? Jennifer yeah. Duffy. All right. All right. Um, Jennifer, if, if, if we, we win, win, this is yours. Yeah, if we if don't, we then win. you'll have to now, floss the old fashioned way. Now, camera girl, if you would please pull in, uh, this is today's first headline. What we're going to do is we're going to ask Chris to finish this headline. Okay, it's I've got it blocked out there. Chris, I need you to finish this headline. I'm going to give you multiple choice, and, and, a, and maybe Eric wants to jump in and help you if you get stumped. But you're. Eric's Chris a better reader than good. I am, so this is probably his... Okay, thing. as you can see, the headline is County to City Park Deal will include blank. Toilets. Okay. No, 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 no that's not, not really toilets. Good. Not an option. A, petty cash from Public Works. B, a cash payout. C, the EDC director. Or D, Zona Rosa Bonds. Oh, hell. This is, it's all money, it's right? I mean, except for the one, the direct... Do they actually, like... They trade did. the director they in that could. case? I suppose they could. Is it how that done. works? Like, That's like, what it says. Like County for Alex City. Smith in a third round draft pick or could something? Uh, I want to go with the Zona Rosa. No. You're, no. You're incorrect. Oh, no. good. You should, Zona, ask, you should ask a friend. Zona yeah. Rosa's broke. You could have phoned a friend. <laughs> Do I get to play? Well, not that one. Uh, okay. You get the next one. All right. Let's get Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we want Jennifer. Oh, yeah. We want Jennifer. We want Jennifer. Jennifer's got crud in her teeth. Okay. Okay. Get that out of there. Eric. County to city park deal will include petty cash from public works, B, cash payout, C, the EDC director. I'm going B. Cash payout, you're correct. Jennifer Duffy Russell, you Jennifer's win this. Jennifer's the winner of this. the Hoover water pick. Oh, my goodness, Jennifer. And I know Jennifer used to work in the in the medical field years ago. I ran into her once or twice. has some medicinal All right. uses as well. Next. story. Next Congrats. headline. Oh, this is very recent. This is for Susan Phillips. Susan Phillips, we're playing Susan for you. Phillips, nice to have Susan watching. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I get the right card. Oops, wrong card. Right card. Okay. I will consult with you this time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Clearly. Well, was, we definitely want Susan to win. Absolutely. Feral Views Court collected too many blank. Oh my. Feral Views Court. Feral Views Court. Feral Views, Feral Views Court. Which is collected. You're they familiar with them. They've had some issues. Bucket of, bucket of worms. Uh, was it bucket of worms? No, no. No, that's not one of the choices. Feral Views Court collects. Feral Views Court collected too many A, doobies, B, donuts, C, dollars, D, indictments. Okay. Doobies, donuts, and indictments are all law enforcement terms. <laughs> so I love how speed. you threw that donuts in there, man. That's, that's awesome. What was the other one? Dollars. Dollars. Too many dollars? I don't know. I, it sounds like... I think you better go see. Like <laughs> too I many dollars? Because so, I really want Susan to win, I think you better go see. Too many dollars. Too many I dollars! Too many dollars! Susan! Susan! What is that? I haven't read the story, obviously. What does that mean? They 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 made too much... They did too good of a job? Yes. They wrote too many tickets and collected... You can only... A city, a village, can only collect... What is it? 20% of their... Overall general operating revenue for a year, they can only collect up to twenty percent of that amount each year, and they collected like. What kind of law that. is that? Well, it's to keep. You can collect as much as you want, but, but, you have but to give the, to the excess you have to give to the Department of Revenue, right? Right. So, so what they don't want is municipalities to become speed traps, speed traps, and, and so they say you can only collect twenty. Well, that works without the barn, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they need to. They need to. Buy signs for Tracy, Missouri, down the street. Yes. You know. I forgot to tell Susan what we were playing for. She gets a gift bag from Platte Valley Dental. All kinds of good stuff in here, Susan, when you pick that up at the landmark You're the office. best dental. You know what? You don't get dental gifts like this. No. Like Wheel of Fortune or Bowling for Dollars or anything. There's really some valuable here. stuff in there. This is good some stuff. fancy floss and, and all kinds all right, of All right. We're, we're two, for, two for two. And Platte Valley Ish. Dental is giving stuff away. Nice. All right. So here we go. We're on to question number I three. Got Trish Stimmett. Stimmett. Trish Stimmett. Oh. Stimmett. Trish Stimmett. Well, we want Trish to win, too. Trish. Okay. Bad news in Platte County this week. Zoom in on this headline. Harley Davidson plant to close. 
Now this has a what we call a subhead. A lot of sub people, a lot of people in the newspaper industry call this a deck head. I call yeah. it a subhead. But anyway, yeah. tell us what the subhead can, is. Can, without without the multiple choice, can I can I yes. take a stab at it? Harley Davidson plant to close. Beard barbers across the county are saddened. No, no, but. No, but we'll let no, you guys have another shot. Probably bad. Okay, the subhead. Harley Davidson plant to head. close. A, just as their tax breaks are expiring. <laughs> B, EDC director goes into hiding. The EDC director, you got that? You really got a thing for the EDC director? I don't. That's, I don't even. What's going on? I don't know. C, not enough people buying fat boys. Or D, around 750 jobs will be lost. Well, I think I I think it's 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 D, although the the fat boys, that's that cuts that cuts both ways too. Yeah, but I, so I'm gonna, would you go with D? Well, Seven fifty jobs. I, I, I think? think I'm going with 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 D, but but I mean, could be a result of yeah. not exactly. enough fat boys. And it's very. So, and it's, you're it, trying to guess what was actually is, in the headline, so yeah. it could be. It, are there tax breaks just conveniently ending right around now? I do believe so. Mm, interesting. Mm. So, so D. But I think you're right. Yeah, I think it's D. We're going to go D. That's a winner. Who are we playing for? Trish. Oh, Trish. Okay, we, Trish. We absolutely. Trish. Trish to win, too. Oh, Trish is a country music fan, I believe. So, na, 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 Trish gets na, 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 na. two tickets two. to the Gene Watson concert at Ameristar Gene Casino. Gene Watson. Trish, Gene Trish Watson. you take your husband. The you enjoy Gene that Watson. show. And Chris was listening to Gene earlier tonight. So I was. Chris, uh, I'm going to listen to him on the way home. Yeah, and this, this show is Saturday, February 24th, Trish. You can pick those up in the Landmark office at 252 Main Street. I think you know where we are. Nice job. All right, what do we right, have? We, need, we, need we have two more. We have two more to go. Let's Give us see a... if there's another contestant. Uh... And Eric might be too much help on these because... Both these stories deal with crimes that uh, he's probably uh, familiar or, or, with. Do you right, I'll sit it out. If you uh, want me to sit it out, I'll sit it out. I've got Jennifer Goring. Goring? Jennifer. 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 Let's play for Jennifer. Okay. And I can phone a friend if I need to. Yep. Okay. If we would please, we're going to start with a woman says headline. Woman says, oh boy. Woman says tornado led to oh, blank. Oh my gosh. Woman says tornado is this, led. Is this the aforementioned woman? That is her. Right I, I X out her name. Okay. Tornado led. Woman says tornado led. A led her to the land of Oz. B led her to puff the magic dragon. C led her to a field of wild mushrooms. Or D led her to steal a vehicle. Now, if a tornado were to lead me somewhere, it would yes. lead me to my son's room. Oh, because that that's seems where to be where some the, damage. The tornado okay. has been hit. Um, I well, puff the magic dragon has is always a problem in this town. Mm. Uh, but we'll, we'll say that led her to to what a D steal. You are correct. We are giving away prizes tonight. Now, what is the story behind that? She she uh, she decided that she yeah. the tornado. She, was, she, was she claimed around. that she needed to seek shelter, and so she jumped in this vehicle that did not belong to her. Well, now that's a shame. Oh. Desperate times at protect desperate herself. measures. Try to get to the puff the magic. That'll be an dragon. interesting case. We might want to sit in on that one. You know, have any more details on that one, Eric? I, you know, not familiar with that case? I, I am generally familiar with that case, but I want to stay away from talking. About oh yeah, okay, good idea. All right, all right. One more headline. Uh, we need one more contestant. We have somebody. Do you have any puff the magic dragon cases that you could talk about? <laughs> well, that would that would have been a great headline. <laughs> Doobies, donuts, and indictments. Oh my goodness! Let's pick out another name. Um, Andy Ringling. Andy. Uh, Andy Ringling had a good. Uh, he was a commenter. Okay. Andy. Andy, we are playing for you. The last headline of the night: Farley Man. Farley Man charged Farley man. with blank. Farley Man. Farley Man. Farley Man charged with a. Zoom in on this one more time, if you would. This is the Farley Man? Yeah, that's the Farley Man. Yeah, Farley, like Farley Man charged man. with A, neglecting his beard. Well. B, uh, yeah. neglecting two dogs. Mm. C, neglecting his farm. Or D, pillaging the village. I'm going to go with the dogs. 
Correct! Everybody's a winner! Although he does need to not neglect his beard quite as much. Because that thing is getting out of control. That was Andy winning. Andy, you won a free level one tan from our friend Vic Perrin at Total Tan. Andy's going to be out. looking good. Was that all of our? Was that five? That was it. That was, we, that was Okay, that was, that was we're done. Free level one tan, Andy. Awesome. TotalTanKC.com. I learned a lot. Yeah, it was You're good. Smart Educational, Andy. entertaining. There we go. There you are. Good stuff, you guys. I tell you what, Eric, we appreciate you hey. announcing tonight. It's been great. Your it's future great. plan good, to good, seek re-election. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. He'll be Thank on you. the ballot. Maybe, maybe stop going to Chiefs games, and I think we'll yeah, be Yeah, well, then we might be all right. <laughs> Any rumblings out there of an opponent, perhaps? I have, not heard, I have not heard a word, but you never know. Yeah, you never know. Your election will be the primaries in August, general in November. Exactly. Okay. All right, guys, next week we've got another show. How about that? We've got some girls from the Platte City Chamber of Commerce. We've got Executive Director Angie Moody, and we've got the Events Coordinator, Leanna Lightfoot coming on to talk about the upcoming Platte City Chamber of Commerce celebration of business. It's always nice to have people from the business community come on and, and pimp the county, don't you they, think? And they do a good they, job. They, 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 we need we, more we, people to pimp the county. I've for, reached for out to so purposes. many people to try to get them to come on and pimp the county and tell everybody what the county does well and this what we're doing. What I mean, we're it's, doing it's to attract economic county. development law, and, maybe, and, order and maybe get the word out to what these people at Harley could do and how the county agencies could help them find new jobs now that they're out. But, you know, we can only say yes when the people say yeah. We try to serve our people. We reach out to people who can help our people. And, and some folks do not like Facebook. They'd rather be speaking at a, at a sewing club or something. I don't know. But here we are. When everyone wants to come on Facebook and reach out to the people, we are to, here for you. You're supposed to drink your tea like Kermit when you do that. <laughs> Emoji style. I think it's quilting night it's or good. something. It's nice. But, nice. Uh, well done. Yeah. Okay, guys. We will see you next week, next Thursday night, 6 o'clock. Be here. Thanks, guys. In the meantime, read your Platte County Landmark. Thank you and good night.